wanted to go over because you guys missed a lot of them. So, number four, G off, yeah, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Briti British English, right? I don't Okay, so let's take a look at this one. GIA has a savings account which pays 0.3% interest every month. He had 1,200 Great British Pounds in his account on January 1st. They want to know in what year will he have double his original savings account. And I must admit, when I did this this morning, I got the wrong answer. Uh -oh because I didn't look that carefully. It was 0.3% and that threw me off. That threw me off. So I missed one, I got seven out of eight. Johnny should be up here teaching, not me, because he got eight out of eight. Okay, so where do we start with this problem? Well, what we should probably start is with the formula. What was the formula again? Future value equals present value. One plus. Now what is R? 0 0.3 over every month. But you have to be careful because we want to know how many months. So even, so we don't actually, we're not actually going to put 1,200 here because we want to know the number of months. So we're just going to put 100. And then what are we going to raise it to? Well, we don't know. We're going to put a T here because we don't know what it is. And now I can take my future value and what can I say? Well, let me erase this and what am I going to replace it with? 1,200. Very good. And then I take the future value and double it because I need to get double the original amount. 2,400. Okay, now I'm going to simplify this. T equals 1 plus, or let's even simplify it further. 1.0. to the T. This is where I made my mistake. Um, zero. Yeah, I was missing zero, so I got the wrong answer. And so now, how do I solve this? Well, use your graph <laughs> Yes, use your handy dandy TI-84 calculator. But before we do that, how am I going to use it? Somebody, what am I going to do to solve this? Y yes, you're going to go to your Y equals on the top and you're going to plug in 2 and 1.0003 to the X. That's your two functions that you're going to plug into your calculator. Okay, so everybody has this. And then you're going to graph it and your window is probably going to be terrible. So just try it and see what happens. And I'm getting this really ugly line here. Oh. Yep. I'm getting this really ugly line and then a little ugly red line and nothing is making any sense, right? I can't see anything. But we're going to try it anyway. I'm going to go second trace, which is calc. And I'm going to go to intersect, which is number five. And I'm going to push enter. Enter, enter, enter. And it's trying to spit it out. And it's got an error. That means that my window is not large enough. So I need to make X much bigger. So go to window. Uh, yeah, your X's are probably too small. Yeah. Two zeros? 
One tenth of one percent. One percent would be here. Yeah, it should be two zeros. That's the problem. That's the problem. See, I still. Hey guys, I still screwed it up. Can you believe that? I still screwed it up. My problem was I listened to Jack. Okay, we still get this ugly line, but I see now that it is intersecting, and I'm going to do that second trace, intersect. It means... Hey guys, the answer is 232, roughly, 231. Which means your X window, I would probably put a min of, let's say, negative 100, max of 300. Now your Y, what's your Y max going to be? No, your Y, the X, yes, the X needs to be bigger than 231, which is why I have the X max as 300. But what about the Y? How do we know? We can know. Because so I want to know when Y is 2. So that, means, so that means I want 2 to be like in the middle of my graph, right? So for my window, for Y, I'm going to do a min of... Let's say minus 10 and a max of 10. What's the scale though? 1. Wait, wait, all we want? Oh, I see it now. Oh. Let's see what happens. Ooh, it's looking better. How do we check where it is? How can you do that? Let me see your window. Let me see your graphs. Uh, that's not the right graph. We need this graph. I don't know. This and that. Yeah, you have to plug in those. You got the answer now? Oh, that looks better. It looks a little better. That looks a little better. Oh, you have the other equation in there? Tony, you got to go to somebody with a calculator, man, because uh, if you don't have your calculator yet, then you're missing out on this important info. All right. So, yeah, that's looking good. That's looking better. Yeah, now do second calc intersect. Calc. Now go to five, which is intersect. Enter, enter, enter. Oh and what did you get? 231? Yes. Yep. Okay. And if you do that, guys, you get 231 point what? Yeah. What is it, like 33 or something? Okay, guys. Can I just solve it normally? Okay, take a seat, guys. Take a seat. Sam, you got it? So, yeah, we can plug it into our calculator. As we can see, it's rather challenging when your window is not friendly. Then you must have the wrong equation typed in by a zero, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, let's take a step back. Have we answered the question? No. No. In which year will he have doubled his savings? So we're going to divide this by 12. And we get how many years? Because, okay, 19 years, 0. 0.25. Okay. Well, I guess that was there. So that means we had 20... 18 yeah. plus 19.25 20 
You're going to get 2037, and we're going to get it in April. No, May, March, March, March of 2037. That's when it's going to happen. Quarter of the way through the year. You don't need March, but they're only asking for the year. 2037. Now, Jenny asked a wonderful question. Can't we just solve this? We can. Mr. Green probably taught you about logarithms last year, right? If I have this, I can take the log of both sides. And now there's a special law of logarithms, meaning I can bring this up front. Log of 2 equals t log of 1.003. So t equals log 2 over log 1.003. Somebody with their handy dandy calculator, can you please check and see if that works? Oh, two th the same answer. Look at that. In this particular case, yes, using the logarithm was easier than trying to f fiddle through all this calculator graphing. Okay. So now, question. So should we, guys, just try to avoid these problems at all costs and just do it this way? Uh, the reason why it's really helpful for you to do this is so you get used to finding your window. Because there are going to be some problems that you're going to have to solve by graphing. And if you can't set the window properly, you won't get those questions right. So we should try to get used to it. Setting the window is a very important skill for the DP exams. And we're in the AI course, so we have the calculator in like every exam. So you need to get really good at it. Any, have we put that one to bed? Okay, any other questions that you had or wanted to go over? Um, All the rest were okay? Yeah. Okay, so, but you guys missed more than that, most of you. So is it just because of silly, like, yeah. mistakes yeah. or whatever? Try to avoid those silly mistakes, guys. Double check. It, once you get an answer, try plugging it back in. Make sure that it works internally before you put it down as your answer. Cognity is not very forgiving in that way. Okay, so. Now, let's talk about the reading. Okay, guys, we're going to look at the next step, which is applications of this stuff in financial contexts. So were there any questions from the reading, first of all? No questions at all. You understand it all? Well, not really on the compound interest. Not on the compound interest? So what, what is it about the compound interest that was confusing you, Kang? Okay. Um, uh, the formula, like, like for a quarter and like half year yeah, no, and stuff one, like it's that. Just, like, it's just, why so... Do we have to, like, you just like, like why do we have to change the 100 thing? Okay, well, let's, let's do some investigating on that, because that is a really good question. So let's say you are going to get 5% interest, 5%, all right? And you're going to get that on your investment every year, annually. Okay, now, 
how would I find out, let's say I had $100 and I was going to invest it. How do I get what I'm going to get in, in another year? To the one. So when I get $105, right? Now, what if I was going to compound that interest every month instead of in a year? Because, like, well, let's first think about what's it going to be in the next year. So this is year one right here. Yeah. What will it be in year two? You have to make the this goes over here. And I get something else. What is it? 